Hey beautiful people, welcome to my channel. My name is Busisi Wetlamene Harari, the Cape Path Principal. If you haven't subscribed already onto my channel, may you please click on the subscribe button there at the bottom and also click on the notification bell so that every time when I upload a video, you get notified. So in this video, I want us to talk about fluorescent polarization immunoassay or we can say it's FPIA. In abbreviation so in this case it means now we are going to talk about an antibody or an antigen that will be tagged with a fluorescent molecule and the light that is going to be used it will be polarized light and it's also an immunoassay so it means there's antigen and antibody reactions that are taking place so a fluorescent polarization immunoassay it is a competitive immunoassay So it means a fluorescent um, molecule that will be um, attached to an antigen or an antibody will get excited by the polarized um, light at an appropriate wavelength. So what happens then after that is that smaller molecules, they uh, rotate rapidly and randomly, which leads to the light being depolarized. Whereas larger molecules, they will rotate slower which leads to the light the light staying polarized and what happens is that the light that is polarized will be measured at a 90 degrees angle and the polarized light it is inversely proportional to the concentration of the analyte that will be tested for so let's write that down So basically this it is the principle. So if you get a question whereby you are asked, what is the principle of fluorescent polarization immunoassay? So what you will say is that um, the a fluorescent labeled antigen or an antibody will be excited by a polarized light at an appropriate wavelength. And then smaller molecules will uh, rotate faster and rapidly resulting in depolarized light whereas the larger molecules will rotate slowly resulting in polarized light and then the polarized light is measured at 90 degrees angle and it is inversely proportional to the concentration of the analyte so how do we get this polarized light so usually the polarized light we get it when the normal white light passes through special filters so it means the light will pass through special filters and then those filters they will polarize the light and then then that's the light that will reach the cuvette it will be the light that will be polarized 
and then depending on whether the molecules are smaller or larger as we say the smaller ones will rotate rapidly and then they will change the plane of that polarized light so that is why we say that uh, the light becomes depolarized so it means uh, what uh, depolarized light is it is the light that will be emitted that will be, that will be in a different plane as the excita excitation light whereas polarized light it is the light that, that will be emitted will be in the same plane as the excited light so basically that's what a fluorescent polarization it is so, so to explain further let's do it in a diagram form so that you can see what really happens so in this side we will have a positive scenario and then on this side, we'll have a negative scenario whereby the patient is negative. So that analyte is not there. Sorry. So what's going to happen is that in a, you can see this is a cuvette. It's a cuvette. So what happens is that you will have an, um, an, an antigen, you see we'll have an antigen that um, it's tagged with a fluorescent molecule. So this is our antigen, but our antigen does not go alone. It is tagged with a fluorescent uh, molecule. And then we will also have, these we get it from the reagents. Né? So we'll also have an antibody so this antibody, let's say we are testing for bends, for example. So it means this antibody will be an antibody that is specific to a bends antigen. And as well, it can be able to bind. So it means this antigen that is here, it's a bends antigen that it's made in a laboratory, which it is um, tagged with a fluorescent molecule. So this is what you will have in the reagent. So now what happens is that when the patient sample is added, so we are saying this is a positive scenario. So it means the patient sample, the serum will be containing the antigen, the Benz antigen. So this is the Benz antigen. So it means now the patient antigen and the antigen that is tagged with the fluorescent molecule, they are going to compete for binding site. So since the, the patient is positive, then it means the antibody, the antibens, and the bens antigen from the patient, they are going to form a immuno, an immune complex. So this complex, it's small. You will see what do I mean when we go to the other side. So the same thing in here. So the, this is your antibens using the reagent and then there's also the antibands tagged with a fluorescent molecule so in this case we say it's negative so it means in the patient serum there is no anti uh, there is no bands antigen so what means is that this means this anti gene that is Take with a fluorescent molecule, it's going to bind to the antibody and then it will form an immune complex. So it will look like this. So if you can look at this, this is a large molecule. So compared to this one. So what happens is that now that light will be shown through so they say this light is polarized already. It will be shown through. And then as it's shown through, because this, um, uh, uh, this light is going to excite the, um, sorry about that. So the, the small, actually, this is what I refer to as a small molecule. Because this is the one that it, it is, um, has a fluorescent tag. So this is what will react to the, flore um, the fluorescent uh, light 
whereby the, the antigen of the patient does not contain that. So this is smaller than that. So when this polarized light is shown through this um, solution, what's going to happen is that it's going to excite this fluorescent dye. And then as it gets excited, then it will start to rotate. But because it is a smaller a molecule, it's going to rotate rapidly. And then what we are going to find is that on the other side, we're going to find depolarized light. Then on this side, which now we have this um, antigen that is take with a fluorescent molecule, it's bound to the antibody, making it a larger molecule. So there's the polarized light. It's shown through, but because it rotates slowly, we end up still having the same polarized light. And then this polarized light will be measured at the 90 degrees angle. So that's why we say that uh, the, uh, the polarized light is inversely proportional to the concentration. So as you can see here, because this molecule, uh, it, it rotated faster and rapidly, it ended up releasing more depolarized light than polarized light. So it means in this case, because the, 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 sample, the, the sample, the patient is positive, so there is an, um, an antigen for bands. Then it means here we have less polarized light, which result into a high concentration. That's why we say it is inversely proportional. Then on this side, the patient is negative, which resulted in these two binding together, which resulted in a larger molecule, which result into a polarized light. So it means here we have more light that is polarized, which means there is less concentration. So basically that's what fluorescent polarization immunoassay is. Hopefully it's, it's, it's simple and you manage to, to get where I was going with this one. Usually with fluorescent polarization, they can test, um, most of the time they use it to test like drugs of abuse in most cases, but they can do it with other um, tests as well. So basically this is where I would like us to end this video. If there's anything that you feel you didn't understand it or you didn't get it properly, may you please um, write your question there in the comment field and then I'll be gladly be available to, to answer your questions. And from me for today, that's it. Bye.